Hello there, my name is Polish Links and welcome in the next episode of Cupid. And I said we should go. Well, I would probably go with the key first, but then when I think about it, what if he wakes up and we'll need a dagger? But okay, let's stay with the choice I said I will probably go with. And boom. Take it. Take the key and leave the dagger. I have a bad feeling about that weapon. Leave it be. Bros agreed with mother. The weapon was as sinister as it was beautiful. She didn't want to touch it. Rosa took the tiny key into her hand, feeling the cool metal against her palm. She pushed the drawer back. Julem shifted. Rosa blew the candle out. She scuttled behind a small table. It barely hit her. Jlem had changed position in his sleep. Now his face was in full view and facing her direction. Rosa's heart banged in her chest. It was so loud she was concerned the room might echo the sound and announce her intrusion. Rosa waited for a few minutes before moving. She decided to crouch down, holding the unlit candle close to her chest. Easy now. <coughs> she shuffled away from the bed in relief. The candle was dead, but her eyes were now well adjusted to the darkness. She could make out a desk in the furthest part of the room. He must do most of his writing there. There is a huge chance the journal is near. It wasn't very dignifying, but Rosa decided to crawl towards it. Couldn't she do that in the very beginning? Now Julem's face was in full view, a flutter on the, of the eyelid was all it would take to catch her. It would be better to minimize her risks. She dropped to her knees and placed her palms on the floor. What was that? She drew her hand back. Was she imagining it? When her palms touched the floor, it felt warm. Wet. Her fingers were sucked into the floor, as if she touched soft, pulpy flesh. Blood. That is blood. The hallucination was so strong that her nose detected a spray of iron in the air. Her stomach heaved. What? She rubbed her hand. There was no wetness or blood anywhere. What? The floor was solid. It. It must have been her imagination. What? Rosa touched the floor valley, patting it and pulling on the carpet fi fibers. Just a normal carpet. Rosa let out show, small briefs, and she start as she started to move once more. She pounded her way to the desk. Every time her skin came into contact with the floor, Pai rose up her throat. It took some effort to resist the urge to gag. Finally, the desk was directly in front of her. She looked back at the bed. From this angle, it was hard to tell if Julem had moved. She hoped that the big desk also hid her in its shadows. Rosa rummaged. There was no trace of the book on the tabletop. She only found a pot of ink, loose sheets of paper and a quill. That damn thing had to be close. She opened the first shelf and found a stack of papers. Nothing. She shuffled through them, but the drawer didn't have the journal. She looked through the second drawer, and the third. There was nothing of interest. Finally, she pulled on the last drawer, and it was closed. It was locked. <laughs> Rosa sucked the air through the, her teeth. Of course it's locked, how could I have been so stupid? Rosa slumped in the depressed heap. The key. Rosa looked at the key in her hand. She slid it into the hole and heard the locked click. A deep feeling of relief washed over her. The drawer slid open. Rosa looked inside. There it was. In her eyes, the green journal was a treasure. She lifted the book from its resting place. It was heavier than she expected. Rosa smiled. She ran her hands along the velvet cover of the book, severing the texture. At last, she had it. Okay, now go away from there. Child. Mother's voice was riddled with anxiety. Uh-oh. Something is wrong. 
Her excitement had clouded her senses. Oh shit. Oh shit. Almost at once she felt the change in the air. Everything was still. Her stomach shrunk into its cavity. Fresh sweat broke out on her scalp. This silence. It had wave. It pressed on her skin and made the air thin in her lungs. Rosa stood up. She had to leave. Now. Rosa shuffled her way down the room. With every step her legs seemed to stick uncomfortably to the floor. It slowed her movement. One more step. Her whole foot felt like sinking. She held onto a chair and staggered back. It was dropping, musty and red, alive and without skin. And the air was filled with the unmistakable stench of fresh meat. Rosa ran to the door. She didn't care that the handle seemed to curl around her fingers. She pushed the door open and spilled in the corridor. Rosa fell to her knees while she heard the door close behind her. It almost felt like the door closed by itself. In her confusion, she couldn't be sure. Rosa's heart pounded heavily in her ribs. Just looking in the doorway of the room made her skin crawl. Rosa gathered her wits and started a journal in her hand. She hoped it could contain the information they needed. Chapter 6 Good Intentions Oh crap! <clears throat> In the warm, dim light of the library, Rosa opened the journal's cover. Give me a second. She wasn't too surprised to find that a number of entries were written in different tongues. The dates jumped from decade to decade, the writing spanned centuries. Another suspicion validated. Julem was not human. Or at least he did not have a normal human lifespan. That discovery made Rosa search her mind for her date of birth. It distressed her that she could not remember. She shook her head and turned back to the journal. Despite the multitude of languages, the first entry was translated into several languages. For sentimental reasons, perhaps. Or maybe a feeble attempt at reminiscing a more innocent time. I'm learning to write. Aulia gave me paper. I like Aulia. She wants me to call her mother. She smells like oranges. She says I am a gift from the goddess. But I don't know any goddess. Aulia calls me Rai. Alboraj. I guess that is my name now. It is nice to have a name. The other prose, uh, preceding pages were still in a different language. Rosa flipped through the pages until she came upon one she could read. 6 May. I see it in the way people look at me, the way they act, they act around me. Some would, of course, think of me as blessed. I have love, health and the gift of being loved. But I found out that these gifts are curses as well. My love forces me to always wonder. My looks guarantee that I will always stand out. And love? The very same urge that blesses me quickly turns rabbit. Yet I understand why. Ah, uh, love. We all crave it, don't we? In the end, we are all drunk on the ideas that only love could heal our brokenness. They all think I am this cure. But I keep hoping there might be something else besides this twisted sentiment. There must be, Monsinder. Rosa read the words and found them tugging at her heart. This was the same feeling she had had for years. It almost seemed like the words were her own. I know I'm not supposed to be writing this. God forgive me. I do not want to write it down. If I do, it will be the truth. Oh Lord, please forgive me. I didn't mean to do it. I just wanted to stop hurting. I am hiding now. I slashed my face and cut my hair so they would not recognize me. Pain. Pain is good. A penance. Oh Lord, please. If there's a god listening, please strike me down. Bad memories began to surface in Rosa's mind. Desperation. A cornered animal that fought back. It reminded her of her own sins. Her hands were drenched in red. And yet, 
Here she was, planning to kill another man. This had been her goal all along, hadn't it? The same familiar guilt began to steal in her mind. She bit her lip. Rosa skipped some entries, most of them were garbled, almost incomprehensible. They were written in old ink, faded and unloved. Still, for they were melancholic. They painted a picture of a man with sufficient black humor to keep sane. 28th November. The plug has confirmed my suspicions that I do not die from sickness. I don't know how to feel about it. Everyone is dead. But on the bright side, everyone is dead. 7th June 1489. For decades I have searched for something in this life and I am always disappointed by transients. What am I looking for? Meaning? Hope? Love? Death? Maybe? I can bleed. Wounds to the heart heal slower than the rest of my body. I think I may die if I wounded enough. I have tried that. There was a time when I think myself bleed was the only reminder that I am not numb. Yet my body does not form scars no matter how many times I draw my knife. Like any sign of age or ugliness, they all fade. A wrinkle today, gone next day. As if my body isn't even my own to brand. That is a shame. I want to mar my body so badly that anyone who sees me will flee. But I have tried that too. People are cruel crueler when you are ugly. Why is that? Why do they feel the need to punish you simply because you are detestable? That's true. Why? Perhaps because they can, well that's stupid. Or perhaps because it is easy to be cruel to those which do not belong, that is also stupid. I don't belong, it would be nice to disappear one day. There it is. There is confirmation that he can be killed. So he bleeds like everyone else but heals enough not to die. I strike to the heart. If we find a way... To leave his this wound open, perhaps he can be exterminated. Rosa continued reading. Another feeling was starting to grow in her chest. She began to question her cause the more she read through the journal. I have been staying in the old March farm. They are good people. They invited me to eat with them. And it was in the warmth of their fire that I knew then that I must leave. I will only destroy their happiness. For the briefest of moments, I was able to experience what it is like to be part of a family, not an outsider. Mm. And I lost track where I was reading. Mm. Okay, but accept it. Little Sissy has taken a liking to me, for children are curious creatures. They are a constant reminder to humans of their own impending death, their own weaknesses and mortality. Yet people keep making them, one may wonder why. But it's not difficult to understand. It is the tantalizing thought, the hope that no matter your past mistakes, you were able to make something pure at one point. Watch it grow, watch it live. Such a poor thing. Looking up to you for love and care. It is both power and vulnerability, both selfish and selfless. A curious thing indeed. Rosa shuffled through more pages and saw a different penmanship in one such entry. It caught her eye. January 1500. New century. I like it. I smell change in the air. It is so much easier to lie when you have the means. Trading is a good sport. My name nowadays is Baron Eric Dobshire. How could I have forgotten mankind's paralyzing obsession with titles? Names have power. Titles have power. I simply bought a horse and good robes, and introduced myself as such. Everyone fawned over it. I could get used to this. The taste is refreshing. I must plan this better next time. A background, a story. People love stories. Maybe I should be an actor next. 27th March. 27th March, 1507. Cretins everywhere. Human nature stay the same. The powerful will take advantage of the damned. So it is all a struggle for control, is that all there is? I have thought it would be different, somehow, in a learned class, in a different era. What was I expecting? Fortunately, I am already well acquainted. The next entry span 
workmanship was scratchy and difficult to understand. 1st December 1550 I'm tired of this life. It is all an endless cycle and I can't stand the taste of this any longer. Love turns to ash in my mouth. I am trying to sleep, to stop. I want to stop. It is my seventh day without consuming anything other than normal food. It barely grazes the bottom of my stomach. I want to see if I will die without eating love. I am sick of this. Now we know what he is, Rosa. He consumes love. I don't know exactly what he is, but he is a monster. A demon. Didn't I tell you? I felt it in my bones. Well, you actually don't have moans. You are kind of dead. <laughs> okay, he might actually come out, come there any moment, so that's enough. You have learned enough. You know what he is and how to kill him. There's no more need to read further. Rosa's hands were shaking by then. A growing feeling of understanding came over her. His thoughts were too much like her own. They were too similar. Gilem consumes love. Boza remembered the taste in her mouth when she had kissed Catherine. There was something else in that kiss. A boundless flavor that coated her mouth and made her realize how hungry she was. The same night that Catherine began to change. Rosa's throat dropped. The thumping felt like it resonated through her whole body. Rosa fell to her knees. That same feeling of dread began to rise up in her throat. The mere mention of the font seemed to summon the feeling in her chest. She gagged. Did I taste Catherine's love that night? Then that means that I am also... Mother? Am I... the same? She hastily pulled out the locket that Julem had given her previously. It was still a difficult, as difficult to open as before. But right now, Rosa was armed with a terrifying conclusion. She struggled with the same thing until she thought her nails would peel off her fingers. The pendant popped open, revealing a yellowing portrait inside. Well, finally figured out, have you? Do you see it now? Do you see why mother wants his punishment? My child. He is a monster. The very thing I stopped you from becoming. Don't you see? I saved you. I stopped you from feeding on other people's love. I just want you to be filthy. Mother's love is all you need. You have learned enough. Now we know what to do. Kill him. He's what I have feared the most, Rosa. Okay, let's see how she will react in the next episode, actually. Hope you enjoyed this one. And, well, see you tomorrow. Bye. By the way, she's nice. Again. She really is a beautiful lady. Okay, bye.